we've done work over the last school term with different schools around Monaghan looking at social justice, development, education, global citizenship education, but then trying to bring in a practical element to it of ecosystem restoration, connecting to land too. But today was then bringing the teachers on our own education side at Shield Decree, looking at interior development education, like looking at the unequal, ever-changing world, and then how we can create actions and exploring that, how it works within the school and within each of the teachers' curriculums, and then do some practical work as well, connecting to land. So we had a we did a walk around of the area and then we planted a, a guild of, of plants too. So an edible oak tree, an autumn fruiting raspberry, a black currant, some lavender and some mint. We don't want to say restore your own land because the idea of owning land we think is a bit of a fallacy. But land people have potentially got access to begin to look at ecosystem restoration as a way of working with food security issues and beginning to heal the land as well too. So we are looking at implementing a pledge to support people to restore the land that's around them. That could be tidy towns, it could be people's farms or it could be backyards or that too. We're part of nature, we're not separate from it. So we need to build soil, bring life back to soil. So treat soil as a spiritual experience I think too as opposed to like we treat it like dirt and then also like how much like, carbon that could sequester healthy food nutrition you know be connected to land but then planting as well too so creating systems that work with nature and permaculture being one of those things too so and there's loads online you can check out and, and, and begin to explore that and go on a journey i mean i think it's also important to say in this that i don't know the answer to this or, yeah. or like i don't know or you can disagree with me mm-hmm. and I can disagree with yeah. you and that's important there's nuance mm-hmm. there's not that mm-hmm. there's not like because I think when you, you do this one of the things I find with, with, when you're doing a teenager they expect it's a right answer wrong yeah. answer yeah. Too. they don't like not none of this is yeah. like mm-hmm. this is the way I see the world isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think that quite like what you were talking about looking at what's happening in the world mm-hmm. and like it's a very good starting point like it's asking ourselves the question why which I ask frequently you know like mm-hmm. why have we not learned at this stage of human development, that war doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Why are we destroying the planet? You know, like so. I think the question why is critical, and then the interconnectivity of the big force of climate change and the war, resulting in forced migration, resulting in hunger, resulting in refugees coming to fortress Europe, resulting in refugees coming to Ireland and ending up in direct provision. You know, so the circle is very connected, and mm-hmm. I suppose if we can ask the question that allow students to see that connection. Mm-hmm. I think that's important. Yeah. I had a, a great time. I found the content fascinating, what we discussed both in the classroom and then before we went out t- to look at the planting areas and yeah it was a really enlightening experience and I feel inspired. I'm looking forward now to bringing a few things back to the classroom and hopefully influence my students in a positive way. Actually, I had a really good day. To be honest, I didn't know what to expect because I'm new to teaching global citizenship or development education. And I suppose the thing I enjoyed most was talking to other people, you know, in the same boat, other teachers. It was very informative. I definitely learned loads from it and will take it back. I think maybe the term global citizenship can throw them but actually when you look at it in practice here today what being a good citizen is you can see how everybody in their own individual lives could go home and do their own bed and use their garden or you know if they have access to land or anything like that how they could use it in their own lives yeah. I found today with Gareth really really interesting he's an inspiring guy <laughs> I suppose done in a really fun way very practical way and learned a lot of things I didn't really think that I would today so I've taken a lot away from it. I think all students, especially from a young age, should know a bit more about this. I think it should be something that people and kids and students are kind of practicing on an everyday sort of basis, you know. That will definitely create good change, you know.